they should study scripture very carefully, the Jewish scriptures carefully. Virch, let's be very frank, almost no, almost literally no Christian reads the Jewish Bible in the Hebrew language, virtually none, unless it's a professor at some university. There's just, it almost really is non-existent. It's very unlikely that there's anybody in your church that uses a Hebrew Bible as a source. So you're utterly relying on a translation, and translations are not translations. They're commentaries. So, and Christians are not reading the Jewish scriptures, with the exception of some very important texts like historical events, creation, that Christians do study very carefully. Christians are very, very familiar with the, with the first half of the book of Genesis. Very f familiar with the book of Genesis in general because it's their history as well. That they are very familiar with. But beyond that, as you move on to the five book, there's almost no Christian even reads the book of Numbers in a translation. If they do, they do it as part of a cyclical thing, but not in depth. It's very important that they study the Jewish Bible. And one other thing I'm going to say that's controversial. They really should study it from a rabbi. It initially, initially, and today, it's accessible. There are many rabbis whose teachings are available on YouTube, recordings all over the internet. I'm talking about real rabbis, a lot of fakes, but a real rabbi. Why do I say this initially? So know this very clearly. Every good rabbi wants to become unemployed and go out of business for a lack of customers. We don't want it. I, it should only be that I don't have to do any of this teaching because the knowledge of God will fill the world. We, all we want to do is empower people. The danger for Christians, I'll be very upfront, is that they've been trained and brainwashed to believe that Jesus is all over the Jewish Bible, and even though it's not there, but they read him into text when it's not there. They Jesus is somehow there when there's no mention of him. Every time there's an angel of the Lord, that's Jesus. And this really affects Christians very deeply. That it's almost hard for them to, to create any, to segregate these thoughts. It, it, they're so, since they're children, they're just taught that of course that's Jesus. Of course the angel of the Lord that, in, that Joshua encounters or the angel of the Lord mentioned in Exodus, of course that's Jesus. And, and this creates a very, very big problem. The very big problem is that it, 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 it's just very different for, difficult for Christians to, to, read, to, to read the Jewish scriptures in a healthy way that's not biased. Very, very difficult. And that's why I say that it's a very good idea for Christians to study with so, with a from a religious Jew. It doesn't have to be a a rabbi per se, but a Orthodox religious Jew, and to listen very carefully, and then to go back into the text and check it out, and learn the Hebrew and learn it for yourself. And I say this now. I'm gonna just. I want to just illustrate this. I think everyone's going to agree with me. If, so, a Mar, if someone from Mars landed on Earth in a spaceship, and the only thing she can do is she was completely conversant in biblical Hebrew, and you handed her a Tanakh, a Hebrew Bible, okay? So someone who has no prior nothing, and she reads from Genesis through Malachi or Genesis through Second Chronicles. Doesn't make a difference. Is there any sane 
sober person that thinks that she would then, upon reading the Hebrew Bible in its original language, with no prior influence, would say, ah, Jesus is the Messiah, and there's one God but three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and this angel of the Lord is really the second person of the triune Godhead, and who will become incarnate at some stage in history, and that you're supposed to eat the body and drink the blood of the Messiah, either literally, as Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox do, either in a in a an exalted way as Lutherans do, where they believe in a a real presence, whatever that means, not germane, or as Calvinists do, where it's completely symbolic. Is there any sane person who believes that a a Martian who all that Martian can do is the Martian speaks Hebrew fluently, reads Hebrew, that's the only no other influence. The answer is impossible. Impossible. No, the only way you can possibly believe any of the core doctrines of the church is if you started with Jesus and then read Jesus into the Jewish scriptures and your mother telling you day and night Jesus loves you and every person of authority telling you Jesus loves you. And Jesus is right there. Well, if he is, why doesn't it say it? Like, just why doesn't it say that God is going to come as a person and die for your sins? If you believe in him, you're saved, and if you don't, you're not. If it did, we'd all be in church. I'd be in church right now. It, everyone would. We're not crazy. The reason is that this is why I care deeply about Christians, and I don't know how Christians feel about it. I think a lot of Christians respect me. Some are very angry. But I care about them very much because I know that they're in a horrendous, unenviable position where they have nothing to counterbalance it. And the only struggles they have is Catholic, Protestant, Calvinism, Pentecost. That's, that's their struggle. So, um, so, Therefore, it, it, they're reading everything in, and what Christians should do is just study with a Jew who knows Hashem. And in fact, this is what Tanakh says. Not, this is really not my opinion, but we see in the Messianic age, that's exactly what's going to happen, where 10 Gentiles of different nations will grab the hem of a Jew, won't let go. And he'll say, take us with you. Let us go with you. That's plural. Because we know that God is with you. That's why in Jeremiah 16, 19, 20, it literally, these are all messianic passages. I didn't put it in your Bibles there. And the Gentiles will come to you and say, surely we've inherited lies and vanity wherein there is no truth. How can a man make them to himself gods when they're not? Now think about this for a moment. If in the Messianic age, the non-Jews are going to come to the Jews and say, teach us about God, how, why would they go to Jews who are wrong about the most important thing? Jesus. So it really is what the nations need to do. They need to come to the Jewish people now as fast as possible. Listen and, and just, of course, if you're a Christian, test everything that I'm sharing with you. Study it. Go back to the original. Look it up. You spent enough of your life relying on a man or men. You know, we're... we're Look it up. Make sure what what we're saying is correct. But then you do want to study with Jewish people, people who are teachers in the nation of Israel, and 
so that you can offload all that baggage from the past and start a life new without anything unclean. 